One of the key issues for us is, is capital structure. So a small cap and you know, particularly a micro cap um, is at a relatively early stage in their, in their corporate development. So in, 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 and, and they tend to be more capital hungry at that point in the cycle. So for companies that, uh, for companies that have excessive, in our opinion, excessive levels of gearing, um, we, would, uh, we would sort of see that as an initial red flag, particularly if the level of gearing was inappropriate for the, for the nature of the business. So we would, uh, we, we, we would view that as reducing their, level, their financial flexibility, their ability to respond to uh, crises and, uh, and disruptions to, and temporary disruptions to the business model. So a, a relatively small disruption in a company that's overgeared could end up causing significant, uh, a significant impact to the business. We'd also prefer to see any free cash flow being generated by the business going into growing the business rather than supporting existing, uh, existing debt within the business. So that's an area that we focus on quite, uh, quite significantly. Um, other areas where, where, where we sort of have a strong focus are whether or not management have skin in the game. Uh, that, uh, so, so by that we mean do they have a, a, a material shareholding in the company. That's important to us because microcap companies, again, being relatively early in their corporate development, have strategies that are likely to play out over an extended period of time. So we would like to see key executives incentivised over, over a long period of time and we would like to see them aligned with us um, in terms of having a significant shareholding in the business. So for management teams of, of young businesses that are essentially drawing a salary and a bonus, uh, mostly in cash and relatively little shareholding in the company, we, we would see that as a, as, a, as a red flag as well. Um, in, in a similar vein, companies that have uh, insiders with large shareholdings, we, uh, we view with suspicion any significant sell down of their shareholding that isn't, um, that isn't appropriately explained. We're also wary of companies that, uh, that derive a bulk, the vast bulk of their growth through, through M&A and that are in, and, and in combination are incentivised to grow the company by M&A through inappropriately structured incentive schemes. So we, I think we've seen a lot of examples over time of companies that have grown rapidly via M&A. Uh, those those uh, acquisitions have been poorly integrated, uh, cultures have been pulled together and, and again poorly, poorly integrated and has resulted in, uh, in significant problems within the business. Um, you know, Vocus for example has been a, you know, a key example in recent times of that. Uh, so that's something that we monitor quite closely.